Builders coming at it. Bowler over on the far side. Bowler just in front. Rocket Horse is in for the fight. Bowler and Rocket Horse, they hit it. Bowler! Welcome to this week's edition of The Final Gallop. It is episode 264 and it is proudly supported by the Brisbane Airport Hotels Group and PlayUp. Uh, we're going to shortly preview our 10 runners for country finals race day at Doombin on Saturday, Brisbane's Road to the Magic Millions. Uh, joining me is Tony Gollum. Morning Tony. Uh, Doombin was a happy hunting ground for our stable last uh, weekend with three winners, Warby, Comrade Rosa in the listed Tattersalls Classic and Zarastro back to his best in the listed recognition. Yeah, good morning Claire. Good morning everyone. We are doing the show a day Going earlier early. today. Yeah, it's still morning. I'm yeah. sure you guys will, will find that out. Um, yeah, it was. Doombin was great great last mm. week horses race well we started off that trifecta yep. earlier in the day and then we got the two feature races and um, boy they were good they Comrade were, Rosa was excellent really. she never give her punters or her backers uh, a worrying oh, nice. moment she Ryan just had her in the right spot all the way proved at the right time and it was just so clinical the way she won and Zarastro geez he was good he was dominant he was really good, yeah, yeah he, he, I was really disappointed in myself for him knocking up this up before I thought he had that race at his mercy, but the improvement in him yeah. on that two week turnaround and the fitness edge he got off that run the previous start, he was really dominant on the weekend. So they were great, it was a really good good day and onwards now to George Moore Day, a day that I really loved. I think this is the normally the best sprint race um, during our Brisbane part of this summer carnival. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait this weekend. Absolutely. Okay, let's look at that preview of the Saturday summer carnival feature meeting at Doombin. The rail comes into the one meter position from four meters last week. The track is currently a heavy eight with very hot days ahead, but with the chance of showers on race day. With this forecast, it could be anywhere from the better side of soft to heavy come race day. Yeah, I don't know. It just depends what we get on the weekend. Yeah. It's an interesting rail movement too, because we were out six and ten prior to that then we're back to four and we're back to one so it's a really interesting part of the ground we raced on a track that it, it they rated as a soft six last weekend and probably raced more like a five but the corners did cut out a bit mm -hmm. so just how horses race with that bit of wear what what's going to be our better lanes etc i think it's a real watch early few races okay. on the weekend the weather as you said claire forecast some storms on the weekend now they they can be very hit and miss yes, we yeah. we missed the storms early this week here and then we got that good rain yesterday mm -hmm. so the tracks at eight now that will improve by friday back to a good that'll be back to good ground by friday okay. I'm, I'm, I'm adamant okay. it just depends on whether any of the storms hit on the weekend but as far as any track bias goes anyone out there watching if you worry about what i say about this i'd be really watching those early races i think this tracks it's had a, uh, quite a unique rail pattern going into it. I'll be watching the early races. Okay. Our first runner is in race two, which is the Eagle Way, the three-year-old quality over 2,000 metres, and it will be Felix the Scat. He will carry 58 and a half kilos. Ryan Maloney will ride. He's drawn barrier four. He improved first up to second up, hitting the line strongly as any last uh, start, only one length off the winner. The rise to 2,000 metres looks like it will suit him down to the ground. Yeah, ideal. The first up run for the stable, he just jumped into a good spot and it was just a sit and sprint race. And, he was good late, he was okay late. Yeah. We're in the Sunshine Coast, we just put him right back off a wide draw. He relaxed beautiful in the run, and yeah. I thought he closed out his race really nicely. He had, you know, 1,800, 2,000 next start written all over Excellent. him. He's found his race. I, I liked him in what was a blanket he's finished the other day. Very similar bunch of horses again, um, and back to more of a home track. So I wouldn't be getting off, I think he's an outstanding chance. We go all the way down to race seven now, which is the listed mode stakes for the three-year-old fillies over the 1,200 metres, a race that the stable has won four times with Secret Saga, Outback Barbie, a Sugar Boom and Isotope, a, a, Isotope, a few of the stable favourites there. Uh, we've got two runners in this year's edition. Insta Good will be the first one, 56 and a half kilos, Ben Thompson. She's drawn barrier eight. She's had a short break after a two-win spring preparation and had a good hit out at Doombin in a 1,000 metre trial last week. I thought she trialled really good last week with good improvement off it. Worked very well at Doombin on the course proper she did. Tuesday morning. Um, I like this filly. She's probably not of the ilk performance-wise of some of the fillies I've won this race with in the past, but I don't think she's out of a race like this. Okay. And she's a nice filly. I love sort of where she's drawn around the mid, mid, mid part of the of the of the horses, and I think she'll obtain a nice run just off speed from there. So I quite like her. She may just lack that form 
of some of my previous winners and probably some of the horses up the top of the, the ratings in this race. Okay. The second runner we have is certainly Can. She'll carry 56 and a half kilos. Angela Jones rides barrier seven. Earned black type is a two-year-old on debut in the listed Bill Carter in the winter. Has returned for the summer in good order going off her close second first up at this track and trip. Yeah, she's still a maidener. I've yeah. definitely never won this race with a maidener. Um, <laughs> But she's a lot better filly now than what she was in the winter. Uh, as, as a winter two-year-old, she had that black type. I didn't know what to make of her at all. Mm. Come back a bunch better. She got beaten the maiden the other day just by barrier, just by default. She should have won the race. Yeah. Um, well, Posse up did a lovely run just behind him here and raced really, really well. Whether either of these two can beat some of these better performed fillies, I'm not sure. Yeah. But neither of them will be disgraced. I know that they'll be very, they'll race very competitively in what's a competitive sort of race. I think. Are you going to split them or just? No, I think they're, they're quite similar. These okay. two, there's not a lot between them. So if you do like Insta Good on her on her city form, certainly Cairns as good as her. So they're as good as each other. Okay. Moving on to race eight, which race eight, which is the Group Three George Moore Stakes over 1,200 metres. A stable has run this. Five of the past eight editions, including Didn't Cost A Lot, Most Important, I'm a Ripper, Zoo Style and Garibaldi last year. We have five runners this year. We'll start with Baller. He'll carry 57 and a half kilos. Jimmy Orman rides barrier 13 of <coughs> 13. He is first up for the summer after not firing like we know he can in the autumn and winter. He's had a jump out in two trials to get ready for this and he does possess a pretty good first up record. Yeah, he does. He's just got that awful bloody draw. Yeah. He's, um, I've had a great prep with him, yeah. to be honest. I've had a smooth prep. He looks terrific. It sort of really threw my hands up in the air in the winter. I just knew he wasn't going like he was going. We elected to give him a really good break. First good break he's, he's had, had for some really time. time yeah. And he's come back up beautiful. I've had this, this great prep to get him ready for this race. I desperately wanted a low draw. I loved his work on, on Tuesday at Dooman on soft ground. Jimmy Orman, his rider here, piloted him in that work. And he was as, as happy as I was. Um, I, I just... I don't know where he gets to from the draw. Yep. I know if I go right back to last with him, he can't win. Um, but if I let him bounce and just find a spot behind speed, he's a chance of being three deep. So it's a tricky option from the gate, um, but I'm really happy with the prep I've had with him. Second one is Zoo Style. He'll carry 56 kilos. Ryan Maloney will ride him. He's drawn barrier 10. Was posted four wide in the Swiss Ace a fortnight ago, but fought on well for fourth. He won this race two years ago, so we know he can get the trip with the right tempo. Can't wait to see him back at Doom and yep. loved his work there Tuesday. Going as good as I've had him. Obviously, Father Time, you know, is catching up, up with, with, all, with all of us. Yeah. Um, even even me, Claire. Yeah. Yeah. It's catching up with everyone. But I just loved his run off a torrid run in the Swiss Ace. Mm -hmm. He was the best of the on paces by far. Yes. Um, and I just love watching him go around Doom and Tuesday morning. He, was, he, he just loved see, it out there. The horse yeah. loves it. He's, he's mm -hmm. so clean, his action there. He just loves that track. It's his favourite track. His record at Doom and is unbelievable. Um, it's obviously a good race, but with a horse like Rothfire in, it's brought this horse really good in well at the weights. Yep. Uh, he'll bounce and cross him from where he is and find that rail around Doom, and he's going to run a hell of a race. For those, for those of you that, that got on him at the Sunshine Coast and the Swiss A's, don't get off him on Saturday. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to Natuno now. He'll carry 54 kilos. Damien Thornton on board barrier two. He finally put it all together uh, last start when he was first up for the summer, comprehensively winning the Swiss Ace. Uh, the way he charged through the line suggests the rise to 1200 will suit him as well. Well, he's a weight horse in the race, isn't yeah. he? You know, he's 58 and a half. He was in so poorly. There's a lot made of his placement in the Swiss Ace due to the set weights and pens. Yeah. He, he looked to be in terribly. He just demolished them. Mm. So, you know, mm -hmm. back on 54 kilos here. Doom in 1200 off a low draw. That that was the final, you know, piece of the puzzle. Was that low draw? You know, Damien Thornton jockey change is a, is, a, is a negative, but in fairness, Ben Thompson barely sat on the horse anyway, leading into the Sunshine yeah. Coast. So yeah. it's not like it's a big deal. I think he just jumps out neutral on him. There'll be speed coming around with the likes of Rothfire from gate one and Zoo Style from a wide draw. He just lobs on the back of that speed. Yeah. Um, if he behaves himself and races in the manner in which I seen him work here on Tuesday, which was just so nice and controlled. He just he just really feels like the penny's dropped. Okay, that's if, really if he races like that and lobbies, lobs up in third, fourth, fifth here um, and, and settles, yep. geez, he's gonna let go with a good sprint. He saw him let go of 58 and a half. How, how quick will he sprint 54? True. So yep. he looks really well placed. Okay. Next one we'll talk about is Vinco, 54 kilos. Uh, Robbie Dolan will ride him. He's drawn barrier six. He's chilling out behind us, Vinny just having a sleep. 
Uh, he is uh, having Robbie Dolan ride him, uh, barrier six, uh, first up on Saturday, and he does usually benefit from a run or two. He's had a jump out and a trial to build his fitness for this. And he will benefit from this run. Yes. We won't waste too much time there. He's, he'll run, he'll be his competitive run, he'll get beat under four at a badge, and that'll be sort of his pass mark. Then we'll step him up. Um, and then we'll go to the Magic Millions with him. So whether I go again in two weeks or whether I give him a month to his second run, I'll just be the guided. But they have one more run, and hopefully we'll see him back in the Magic Millions Cup. Yeah. Um, I don't know why he didn't fire in the winter, but he's come back green in the summer. Even his jump outs and trials have been better. Uh, I'm really happy with him. So he's going nice. He couldn't win this at 1,200 on his previous first up runs, however. Okay. All that pizzazz is the fifth one, 54 kilos. Angela Jones rides barrier eight. He's the popular win winner of the Wheatwood uh, from the spring and is second up into a summer campaign. Uh, was back to, uh, back and wide first up in the listed Keith now and had to make a six wide run and his effort was better than his placing suggests. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he wasn't all that far off of Zorastro really no. when you look at the margins. He's come out and bolted in last week. Um, I, I tossed, I'll toss and turn what I do with him over the next few days, all that pizzazz. I do think he could map really well here and if storms do happen to come closer to the weekend, we know he's one on the heavy yeah. eight. Um, so I like the booking of Angela Jones on him, she's a good lightweight rider in good form, you saw what she done on Zerastro last week, so right. I think that booking is key. Um, yeah, the other option would be to leave him running next week in the Bribey. Um, he, he's on a path obviously to try and get to the King of the Mountain at Toowoomba, okay. yep. back there where he had his Wheatwood success, so it's, it's all about getting into that race in good shape. Um, but I, I don't think he's a, he's a flukish chance, particularly if it does happen, sure. happen to get these yep. storms. Um, we know Zustov's not that effective on that sort of ground, we know Rothfire's not that effective on wet ground. Um, yeah. We know all that pizzazz is with a nice lightweight in his back and a very fit horse. So uh, he would come into it if storms come around and I, I do think he can negate his barrier even though okay. he's drawn slightly awkward. So he, look, in, in an all, all things being evil in, on a good four world, yeah. he probably hasn't got the class of some of the others just yet. Yeah. Um, but, he, but he doesn't map okay. Okay, so how are you splitting the five of them? A we know of Vinko's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I don't put yeah. Vinko in the top yeah. five, that's for sure, but only because he'll be better when he's at 1400, yeah. as we know. We saw that last summer. Um, look, it's hard to not believe what you saw in the turnover the other day. Yeah. Um, so if you could trust him, I think I said on this show, leading the Swiss Ace, he's a horse to watch out for. He's mm -hmm. just going to get that nice run behind them. I see him getting that similar run here. Yeah. Just that beautiful run off a low draw. Um, and if you can just do everything that I'm seeing him do here now, he can take that to the races. I think you've got to believe what you saw the other day. So I think he is the X factor. I love Zoo Style. You know, he's just an old favourite. Yeah. You know, I love I love watching him race. I love watching him work. Watching mm -hmm. him work at Doom and it's so good watching him that big stride of his. But I just think that too now he's got that X factor about him. We saw it the other day. Um, I think there's an exceptionally good chance here. Okay, move on to race 10 now, which is the class six plate over the 1,350 metres. We have two runners in it. Oz Ignugget is the first one we'll talk about. 60 kilos, Ryan Maloney, barrier eight. He's first up at the summer and he is likely to need a run or two uh, until he gets out to the mile and further. A good fitness building trial for him last week. Yeah, it was. He, he's a funny horse. He can run a race fresh up yeah. 1,350. Um, Ryan's just got to stay awake on him, which will be a challenge late <laughs> in the day, last ride. He stay awake, mate, for me. Because um, he'll just get back worse in midfield, but he'll really run on. You've got to ride him up through horses and make your runs. And mm -hmm. he, he can run run well, this horse. Yeah. Um, 60 probably anchors him a touch. I'd rather him when he gets to the mile 1800. Yeah. But all of his fresh up runs from 1350 have been really, really good. Second one is Mass Destruction, 58 and a half kilos. Jimmy Ullman rides. He's drawn barrier 13. Was a bit disappointing first up over the 1200 uh, metres a fortnight ago, but he did try well before that. You've uh, made a slight gear change with him. Yeah, tie. he's been. He was awful yeah. the other day. Dead set, displaced his soft palate, choked yeah. down. We worked him in a tongue tie. His work, his work and recovery have been very, very good in mm -hmm. it, indicating it's a, it's a very favourable gear change. I don't like the barrier with him going to 1350s. So he's more than likely. To, to jump out next week and okay. go to an 85 in a few weeks time. Okay. We are into the final furlong of this week's final gallop. Who do you think your best winning chance at Doombin on Saturday is? I think in Tuna, in the Okay. okay. Uh, your best each way chance? Well, I haven't got the markets in front of me. Um, I'd be disappointed if Felix the Scat couldn't run top three okay. in that race. Um, outside of him and this is depending on weather we've got a bit of weather to take into account as well he's not great if this if these storms happen to come as well yeah. um depending on the weather in the george Moore, if you're going to back more than one horse 
I wouldn't be leaving Zeus to all out for tracks in good order. Okay. I think he'll run a hell of a race and you know he's going to fight on hard. If the storms happen to come, I'd be looking for something each way on all that pizzazz. Okay, your best track worker this week? Uh, my best track worker this week, Zeus Dole was brilliant around Doombin. On the course proper over there, he was fantastic. Baller and, and um, Alvinko were great, they just went about their business. Yep. Um, I love Natuno here, I worked him at home here on the dirt actually, just kept him in his routine. Yeah. I thought he was great, he mm -hmm. executed his work the best he has all prep. So. He didn't, go, he didn't go the fastest of my horses, that's for sure, but the way he executed his work, I was super happy with Machuno. It just feels like the penny's starting to drop. So yeah, They don't he, pay you money for track. Guys. He's the main one. Okay, your performance from the stable for the week? Gee, it's a tricky one. That's a real tricky one, but um, I expected Comrade Rosa mm -hmm. to win. I think I said that all week. Yep, I, you I did. expected her to win, but I was blown away by Zerastro. He was mm -hmm. my performance of the week. Just the way he, he used that sustained speed and just blew them away. And that's how a lot of horses win here in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, he could be a real find for the stable. You know, come Magic Means Carnival and obviously next year's Winter Carnival. So Zerastro um, and all you boys and girls involved in him, well yep. done. And yep. he's my performance of the week. Absolutely well done. Okay, now we are filming the show before the odds are out for Saturday. But uh, uh, Play Up have let us know that their special offer for this week will be for Tony Gollan to win the George Moore. Any of our runners to win the George Moore with a price to come. So watch out for our social media channels for that price. Um, what do you think of that one? I think it's great. I mean, the Heathcote supporters will be thinking that they're going to win it, and yep. we obviously think we will. So, you know, pick your camp team out there. Exactly. Get on the going. Get yeah, on the going team. Draw to, the line to win the George Moore this weekend. Okay. Now it is time for Cavs Corner, which is supported by the Brisbane Airport Hotels Group. Uh, it's a rejuvenated calf this week after his holiday, as well as landing a multi. Let's see if he's still riding high. Uh, welcome to Cavs Corner for this week. Uh, last week we had to put it. We had a bit of joy with Bailey's help. Uh, this week, we'll slip across the road to Doombin. I didn't think I'd ever hear myself say this, but <laughs> we'll take Felix the Scat for a win into a place certainly can. Good punning, guys. So he's done something he never said he thought he'd say he'd do, which is putting Felix the Scat on top and certainly uh, can for a place. Yeah, well that's interesting. I mean, a lot of that will come down to weather on the yeah. weekend, but if it stays like this, beautiful now, um, they're, they're, two not, not, they're not the worst bets. I'm sure she will be quite good odds, certainly can. Mm -hmm. but as I said, we're doing this show before the market come out. And that three-year-old race, they're even. Yeah, very they're even. very even bunch of horses. So the market will be actually quite interesting to see what they do with the market there, actually. So I don't, I don't hate his multi. He is very fresh. Oh, he's Jesus too fresh. fresh. Oh, he is way too fresh. He, had he, a, he to certainly had a the farm. He had a day out last Saturday too. Yeah. So he's, 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 he's kicking his heels up. He's very fresh. The calf. Yeah, watch out for him on Saturday at the races. Anyway, good luck on uh, Saturday at Doombin, Tony. Uh, more great uh, chances for the stable to continue our successful summer. Yeah, thanks, Claire. And hope everyone enjoys this weekend, particularly George Moore Stakes Day at Doombin. Best of luck to everyone.